Discovering possibilities and potential with passion every day. This is a TPPN production. Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number 93, FileMaker, part 1. Well, welcome once again, and this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast, and today is the first part of a two-part series that may grow into more parts as time goes by. These first two parts, they're, they're on FileMaker here. FileMaker Go and how FileMaker on the iPad actually integrates with the Mac and Windows machines and all of the other FileMaker products out there. I had an opportunity last week to discuss the upcoming changes to FileMaker Go that will be released today. I was under NDA as I learned about this information and I'm very happy to be able to share this with you today about the upcoming update to FileMaker. FileMaker Go for the iPad and iPhone. It's version 1.1. It's a free update, and I'll be getting into all of the different enhancements and changes they've made there, and that'll be part of the episode today. And then the second part will be an interview that I'm going to be doing with Tim Sambura. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right, but his website uh, is found at sambura.com. It's C-I-M-B-U-R-A. And he's a FileMaker expert. He is someone that's very knowledgeable at FileMaker. He uses FileMaker on the iPad and does a lot of cool things with it. And I thought, I better get some FileMaker folks on this show. Some people that are actually using FileMaker in the real world every day. People that depend on this software. People that know what they're talking about as far as, you know, just how people are using it. How it affects people's businesses and Uh, even personal management of different information because I'm a newbie to FileMaker. I'm I'm very new with FileMaker. I have copies for the Mac and for the iPad as well, but I'm very new to the software. I'm very new to that. So I'm going to have Tim on later on this episode to discuss FileMaker, how he uses it, uh, these upcoming changes with FileMaker 1.1. And then next week, I'm going to have an interview with Jonathan, who's out also a FileMaker expert as well, and we'll be having a roundtable type discussion with him as well as a one-on-one interview. So that's the plan for the next episode, but today we'll be discussing FileMaker 1.1 and the interview later on with Tim. So with that said, I mean, let's just get on to the first part of this episode, the FileMaker 1.1 update. To start off this segment on FileMaker 1.1, I'm just going to simply read the press release that is going to be you know, uh, sent out to everybody at uh, September 22nd at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time here. And here we go. Let me just jump into the part that uh, is important here. So users can now produce PDFs directly from FileMaker Go and either save them on their mobile devices or email them. This feature lets mobile users easily save and distribute reports, create invoices, and share project status directly from their iPad or iPhone. Another enhancement is the ability to save a copy of a complete database and email it directly from FileMaker Go. With this feature, iPhone and iPad users can exchange databases from their devices without needing to dock with a desktop or laptop. The update also delivers new ways to work more efficiently with photos and other media and information. FileMaker Go users can capture photos on an iPhone or take photos that are already in the photo library of an iPhone or iPad, insert them directly into the FileMaker Go database. Photos stored in the database can be emailed out later using FileMaker Go. Other file types, such as spreadsheets, can now also be inserted into FileMaker Go databases from a mobile device and emailed out using FileMaker Go. The updates enhance security through a new option to require users to log onto a FileMaker Go database after the iPhone or iPad hibernates. This is ideal when a device is shared among a team, such as a hospital staff, accessing patient records. Also new is the ability for FileMaker Go users to import records from local or hosted FileMaker databases using script steps. iOS iOS app developers may take advantage of the newly enhanced URL protocol from FileMaker for calling FileMaker Go. Using the URL protocol, developers can now specify a FileMaker Pro script and script parameters. This allows developers of commercial and in-house iOS applications to extend FileMaker Go databases and provide a wide spectrum of useful solutions such as barcode scanning. 
So that is the meat of the press release and the updates here. So let me dive into them one at a time here as I go through their slides that they were going over with me last week. So the first big one is creating PDFs from FileMaker Go. So this means you can pretty easily just send off, you know, what you're working on, the database you're working on, and share it with somebody. You can share off patient records or, uh, you know, if you're working with an inventory, you can share that as well. And it's pretty remarkable. And for those that don't know, FileMaker is owned by Apple Inc. So <laughs> they'll probably get this update out right on time. They won't have to go through the App Store approval process as fast or whatever. So, and for those that don't know about all the stuff that FileMaker does, they've got FileMaker Pro 11 and Pro Advanced, as well as their server options, as well as Bento. That's another product that they use that I have not really taken the time to learn yet, but maybe worth exploring in the in the future. So uh, let's move into kind of the different updates here. So let me uh, find the slides here. So uh, basically you're able to, uh, besides the PDF stuff, one very cool thing is being able to insert photos into container fields. So this means uh, before you, you were not able to add photos to like, say you're working with an inventory. Say you're working with your different products. You weren't able to actually add new photos. And this is a real downer because say you're working on creating an inventory, you want to be taking pictures with your iPhone and just putting those in your inventory on your iPhone or iPad. If you can put the photos uh, via the camera connection kit or whatever. So say you've got your high end DSLR snapping photos, use the camera connection kit, put those on your iPad. And now you can actually put those in your database for inventory or other uses. That's something that's pretty huge. So that's a biggie. That is a real biggie. And the ability to now, uh, I guess before, you weren't actually able to save or send the database you were working on. It just automatically saved and be via the, um, the sharing, iTunes sharing feature is how you got it off. But now you can actually save and send databases through email and other mediums there, which is, it's a great thing. Uh, it should have been there from the beginning. I'm glad it's there now. And you can also now import from FileMaker databases. And this is a pretty big one. Before, you know, you just simply had to sync it over and now you can actually import from the databases here. So let me load up their examples here for for importing. And so I can actually uh, discuss this in a, a better manner here. So import from FileMaker databases. Here we go. Import records from remote or local FileMaker Pro databases through script stepped. So you can easily add or update records to your FileMaker Pro databases on your iPad or iPhone. So you're now able to use you know servers and actually access that and have many people working on the same file uh, through iPads and iPhones, and you can be all working on that same file through the server. And you're able to import and export, and it's getting it's not quite at a sync level where it syncs, but it's very close, and they're working towards getting that sync up and running fully functional, but. They're making good grounds as far as as far as far providing a way for multiple users to be working on the same exact file and not cause problems. So that's a pretty significant update as far as working with that. Now, they're also doing some pretty cool stuff here as far as... So they've got different scripts that are now a part of FileMaker Go. So the built-in ones here are go to record detail, go to record list, inventory report, product catalog report, or import from central inventory database. So you're able to basically capture and uh, get different views and different things like that from these different scripts, which is a pretty cool thing. Now, those are all well and good. But the big thing here, besides you got PDF, you know, you got the working with remote databases, you've got all that. The big thing that I'm I'm very excited about is this integration with iOS apps. So what they've done is they've added, as many other applications do, Camera Plus did this to enable that uh, clicking to uh, use your volume button to take a photo. But they've added something very cool, and it's the ability to use that enhanced URL that so many applications have been using to add further, uh, what do you call it, further uh, functionality out of the FileMaker Go application. 
So the example they showed me here is there's this barcode scanner app called CNS Barcode. And what this app does is you open it up, you scan the barcode, and it, you just say capture barcode. And with that, it instantly sends it to your database on your iPad with FileMaker Go. So they have this mechanism now that can actually make it so you can do whatever your heart's content is as far as adding functionality to FileMaker Go. You could be working with a different application that sends its data to FileMaker Go. You could be uh, just the functionality here is, is pretty remarkable because just like Evernote, uh, FileMaker is taking the approach of let's make a way for other people to actually add functionality to our application. And that's something that developers need to realize that, yeah, other developers are at work trying to make your products better if you'll just allow them to. And this is what this compatibility with other iOS apps does. So you're able to take a barcode picture with your iPhone and it instantly sends it to your FileMaker Go database for use on your iPad later on once it's sunk over or however you save it and get it back onto your iPad. Or you could potentially just use the camera connection kit and do it that way. But it's a, it's a pretty cool thing that they've added. So this is the 1.1 update. This is the information that they shared with me last Wednesday. So I've been uh, going over this information for a week here and trying to uh, just comprehend all of it and make sense of it for you guys here. So uh, those are the big features here uh, for this new 1.1 update. It's a free update. The FileMaker Go app is $40, and the desktop apps are... They vary in price. They're a couple hundred bucks uh, if you want that as well. And I would recommend getting one of the desktop apps because currently it only allows you to work with databases already created. So you, all, you have to have already created databases. You can also open databases from Safari. So if, you're, if you've got some databases stored in Safari, you can open those up and start edit, editing those. So, I mean, I could see a business of people just creating a bunch of different templates that people use for the iPad or iPhone to start working on these things. So that's something that I think will be kind of interesting. Right, I think there might be a business of people just creating templates for FileMaker Go users to actually start working with, uh, with those templates and creating their own databases on their iPad or iPhone. I I actually did bring up the question. Uh, I was confused at first. Well, not confused, but just curious that I, I'm not currently able to create my own databases on my iPad. And I asked them about this. And the reason that it currently is not supported is it was the issue of screen size as far as you needing a lot of screen space to actually create a database and all that kind of things. But they did tell me that, you know, with the iPad, in the future, they might actually add that update where you can create databases on the iPad itself. But that's something going to be in the future and not not readily available anytime soon at least, but it is something that they are considering and looking into. But the the reason is it's just, it's too complicated right now with the way databases are created with FileMaker to be able to add that functionality into it. And I can completely understand why that would be because FileMaker is a very advanced application that they would have to do a serious overhaul as far as the mechanism and the way people create databases on on the iPad and with FileMaker for that to work. So I'm hopeful that that will come in a future update because I, I'm really hoping that the iPad can become a standalone device where you don't have to have a PC or Mac to be able to use the really high-end applications such as FileMaker. I, I would really love to see that happen. So that's in the future, and I'm excited for the one when that does happen. But in the meantime, this is a great update that I think I'll, I'll – I'm going to be starting to play around with FileMaker more and see where it fits into my workflow as a single user, not a corporate user or anything like that. So I'm, I'm very excited to play with this. I'm very excited to see their future updates as they come out. But uh, this is their update. This is the 1.1 update, some big things in here. And it'll be an App Store on September the 22nd. And that is um, what I have to share with you about this update here. 
Now we go to the second part of this episode. This is the interview I did with Tim Sambura. He is a FileMaker developer and very knowledgeable on this subject of FileMaker. And I talked to him about his background on FileMaker, some of the more technical things about how, how FileMaker actually works. And we just go in the FileMaker and uh, the updates of 1.1 we discuss as well as, well as a couple other things. So without further ado, let's uh, just bring you to that interview right now. Well, I'm here today with Tim Sambura, and how are you doing today, Tim? It's a great day. And new new products yeah. from FileMaker. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's I uh, I knew about these last week, and uh, that's why uh, we're actually doing this show today. Uh, when they release the NDA from everybody, and we can start talking about this stuff. And that's why this episode will be out a little bit later for some people. I like to get the episodes out, you know, by midnight, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it'll be a little bit later today, so we can actually talk about this stuff. Uh, what What's kind of your background with FileMaker? I'm a newbie with it, so I wanted to get more of an expert on the show about, to talk about it. Well, I've been using FileMaker pretty much since it was released, and it used to be a flat file database. And so a lot of people, if they knew about FileMaker a long time ago, it, it changed a lot when it went from version 6 to 7. They basically rewrote the product, and, the, uh, and so... It is now a fully relational database with a security, good security model, and all kinds of things. So I've been there through all the changes, and uh, professional developer now, uh, okay. certified. We're now in version Maker. what eleven on the Mac. Yeah, FileMaker eleven is the the most current version. Do they update it like a yearly? Do a big point release or how? how it's approximately a year to a year and a half between releases, and so. If you thought of like FileMaker 7 was kind of like an, a 1.0 product in, in some respects, although it read the mm. old format, uh, you know, so we're at 11 now. So it's it's been some major releases, very mature product. Yeah, and they're actually owned by Apple now. Was that always the case or did Apple buy them out at some point? They used to be uh, Claris at one point, which oh, was related yeah. to Apple, um, and but they're a wholly owned subsidiary. But the the other interesting thing is about eighty percent of the the users of FileMaker are are Windows clients, so <laughs> it's pretty diversified. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. But it is really the only database out there that's fully cross platform. You can develop it on the Mac or Windows, and and get immediately you can use it on either. Okay, and so FileMaker is basically a database program. How do you how are people using that? I mean, is it a very open-ended thing that you can use it for inventory, you can use it for all sorts of other things? Yeah, we build custom applications. You know, you can start with a template in FileMaker and then uh, build a custom application that runs your entire business. Sometimes it's used uh, for prototyping because it's a very fast tool to develop things in, and it can also be used for integrating between other database tools or other systems, it can connect directly to Oracle. It can connect to MySQL databases and Microsoft SQL. So a lot of times you'll see FileMaker kind of in the middle making all these things talk that don't normally talk. Okay. The, yeah. other, the, other, the other big place where we see a lot of uh, people that are abusing Excel, they're trying to run their entire business using Microsoft Excel or something. and I've seen those businesses. It's, a, yeah. <laughs> it's not fun to work in one of those. No, and, and so, so you move that Excel spreadsheet that's being emailed and, and abused <laughs> into a, a real database that's built in FileMaker, and suddenly you have uh, security, you have share, shared information between people and... Uh, you know, record locking so that if you make a change, somebody else can't make a change at the same time, those kind of things. Right. So how did you initially get attracted to FileMaker? What was your initial, like, use case for it? Well, originally, I I was using HyperCard on the Mac for uh, contact management for my uh, – keeping my addresses and stuff. And, and when HyperCard was getting kind of towards the end of its – uh, real useful life. I, I switched over to FileMaker, and it was, you know, it has historical roots on the Macintosh mainly, and and so when I started using that, then um, I started introducing it to where I was working at the time and, and keeping track of 
actual uh, like inventory and, and computers and things like that. I was doing computer support at the time. And, and then it just moved into other projects and other businesses. Okay. And you've been, a, I guess, a Mac user and Apple user since the, what, 90s, 80s then? Since the beginning, since uh, they first came out in 84. Okay. And do you do Windows support or is it all Mac stuff still? Um, I, do, I do cross-platform development. You know, So I, I build and maintain FileMaker databases and websites that you know are used by Macs or PCs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it's easy to work with both as you're developing this product. Yeah, actually, I, you know, I run on a Mac and I use Parallels running Windows just so I can test to see the minor differences on on Windows, like where you want to use fonts that work on both systems and things like that. There are a few catch catch things that mm-hmm. yeah out for okay well my next question it's we're, we do talk about the ipad in the show and how has the ipad and the iphone even changed things for you and your clients as uh it relates to FileMaker? well it's really exciting because what there are somewhere around a hundred million or more ipad ipod devices out there yeah i think we're at, i think steve said two i think it was 200 million at the latest ipod event which is just insane yeah there you know there's another 100 million just in the last couple of days huh no, <laughs> since i got those figures no but i mean you know that's that's amazing from a filemaker standpoint that all of a sudden we're opened up filemaker databases into a, a realm of millions of new clients possible and and so it this new product FileMaker Go, which allows you to basically take an existing FileMaker database and and bring it with you on an iPad or iPhone iPhone Touch, is is really just amazing. You you see a lot of people uh, at the beginning when this first came out. It's like, well, I just got to see what my database looks like on my iPhone, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it's it's not really been done before, and and it's it's just made things so much easier. Uh, before the you could bring those things with you, but you'd basically have to build a customized web application that connected to your FileMaker data. So that that's a significantly a lot more work using PHP and HTML and JavaScript and things like that. So right, and I, how well does it work with? maintaining version numbers and all that kind of stuff that uh, I'm not sure if you used iWorks on the iPad, but one of the big problems is you have to basically export or you're dealing with multiple different versions. Does FileMaker do a good job of this? I know they did a recent update the day that might have fixed that. Or, Well, FileMaker, the, the file format has been a, the same since version 7. It, mm-hmm. it, all FileMaker files, you know, really have the same extensible format right now, um, the newer ones, and so that isn't so much an issue. But there are uh, uh, new commands and things that have been introduced in the new versions that um, all of them would run because essentially uh, FileMaker Go is like a FileMaker 11 client, but okay. it does. There are there is a, a subset of commands that don't work on FileMaker Go, um, and, and a lot of those are around um, bring, uh, you know, interfacing with the operating system and things like that, just, just limited by what is on, on the iOS, basically. Right. Uh, and, so, and some of the things that were limitations just last week now have, have gone away with this new version of FileMaker Go 1.1. And one of the other exciting things about that FileMaker Go is that you know being an iOS app, it's so much easier for them to revise the application and get that out to people on a more uh, timely basis than even you know, like the year, year and a half that they normally do with the major um, FileMaker client and server. Right. Because those are more more revisions. Whereas you know one point one, this is released now only a few months after version one actually came out. So you're going to see new features, I think, at a more constant basis, you know, just coming out. Yeah, very cool. And are people going to be able to say they're just clients or just working with the database? They're not the main administrator user. 
Uh, do you see people using iPads as the main way of interacting with their databases now? You could. Um, there are a couple of catch catch things that you need to watch out for. Um, one is that because you're on the iOS, you have the, uh, the opportunity, especially like on the phone, to interrupt a process at any point. You know, like if a phone call comes in, basically your database session stops dead and you switch over to the phone call. And the same thing if you hit the home button on the, the iPad. And, and where that can come into a, a dangerous proposition is if you haven't modified your existing database to, to know about, hey, I'm on an iPad, then let's say you, you had some sort of script that went out and did a whole bunch of things, but it's not normally interruptible unless you like pulled the power plug on your computer. <laughs> It, it could it could leave your database in kind of a half state that you don't know about. So so that's you know like I've gone through some of my existing databases and, and any of those kind of scripts, I've just basically said, you know, well, if I'm running on an iPad, you can't run the script. That right. kind of Do you, so, so it doesn't background yet. Is that okay. something that needs to get added to this update with four point oh coming on the iPad and all the updates with backgrounding? I think that would be a no brainer. Yeah, I don't know how how that's going to play out in the future. Um, you know, it FileMaker Go has its own. You know, it's a subset, but a, a, a pretty full blown client to FileMaker, and so I, I think it's just you know, like right now, working with some of the limitations, you just need to keep that in mind as a developer. But it is pretty amazing that you can take an existing database. And pretty much on an iPad, interact with it in, in a, a really normal kind of of way. Um, it's it's pretty pretty cool. And and for the large databases, is the is the iPad screen big enough? How does the translation go with those huge databases? Does it do a good job translating it and reading it properly in the iPad? Well, that's one of the things that you you know like if if you're um, every. FileMaker database is different because it depends on who developed it and how intelligently they they set up the layouts and things like that. Um, it, FileMaker will basically uh, give you a view of the entire screen. You can pinch and zoom and um, you know and and do all the normal kind of touch gestures that you can on an iPad to to zoom in on a, an area of the screen, but really to take full advantage of it you you want to redesign your filemaker database layouts so that they fit the screen of the iPad or they fit the screen of the iPod and that they're optimized for uh, for a touch interface for example a lot of people in filemaker will create these tiny little buttons that you know that are easy to hit with a mouse or whatever but when you've got a fat finger um, it it may not be the best experience for you. So you want to design your layouts so that they um, take into account that you're using your finger and, and, and things like that. Right. So. And do you see a potential for actually developing databases on the iPad? I know right now it's impossible. And I talked to the guys at FileMaker. They said it's not anytime soon, but is that something that would intrigue you, something you'd appreciate? Because if you're, at the end, just going to be putting this in your iPad to run it. Would that be a logical place to develop it on as well? No, I, I, I really don't think that, uh, I, I think, you know, there's certain things that uh, a computer does a lot better than an, an iPad or, or an iPhone. And, and I just don't think that, I mean, from my standpoint, that it would make a lot of sense for FileMaker to uh, invest in trying to make the iPad version of it do everything that the desktop version can kind of. Yeah. Are you able yeah. to walk through pretty quickly? Just what's the development process for creating a new database? Is it a lot of coding? Is it more visual stuff? Well, FileMaker is probably the easiest database out there to, to build something in if you have really no database experience and, and you can start right away by using some of the built-in templates that they have. They, you can just create a new file and choose a template that might do, for example, contact management or an, an invoice or solutions like that. Um, and then 
from there, you can go into kind of the development environment and add new fields that would contain inf information that um, you want to store or keep track of. Um, and then you can put those onto a layout. It's all graphical. So you're really looking at kind of like a screen that it, and you're able to drag elements around and, and position them and, and, and uh, build your solution that way. So FileMaker has a complete integrated development environment, unlike some other database tools where you have to build the interface maybe uh, on the web um, and, and use it only as a back end. That kind of thing. Right. And earlier you mentioned something about scripts. Now, uh, they talked about scripts to me a little bit on the call last week with FileMaker. And I'm still uh, not quite sure what the scripts do, how they work. And I saw some scripts on the iPad and how those would even work on the iPad itself. So can you kind of go on the scripts and what that is all about? FileMaker scripts is is really the way to, to program or, or automate things in FileMaker. So... Uh, a lot of the script steps, they're they're very defined, well defined. You might things like a set a field or save as PDF or um, import or export or, um, and so you you a script might actually it's it's like the logic of a program that you're building in FileMaker. So you might <clears throat> loop through a set of records and and make changes to them. Um, in, in, so it's really that's the programming part of FileMaker besides the graphical layout design thing. Okay, that's starting to make more sense. What kind of scripts do you use when you're creating your uh, your different databases that you uh, develop? Um, well, I have a set of, of standard development scripts that I've, that I work with, and then those would be things like uh, navigating your solution and going from different um, pages and, and uh, printing reports, scripts, and um, things like that. And then, of course, you have specialized things that are specific for that business. Like you might want to write a script that generates emails to a list of clients and sends out a hundred invoices or, or things like that. And so those would all be scripted processes. A lot of times um, you might do something manually in, in FileMaker uh, and to save yourself time, you build the script so that you don't have to do those five steps over and over. Right. And is the process of doing that pretty simple? Is it like, you know, automate on the Mac, you can watch you do something and it records it. Is it more complicated than that to write your own scripts? Um, it doesn't record it automatically like Automator does, but the scripts are, uh, it's easier than if you, in, in a lot of other tools, you might be faced with just a, a plain text editor and have to know what all the commands are in right. order to start ty typing them. In FileMaker, it's kind of a point and click. Um, I, you, you just pull over existing commands from a list on the left-hand side and then you fill in the the specific information for those commands in dialog boxes. So okay, cool. Well, uh, the next thing I was wondering about is: Are there any other iOS apps besides FileMaker Go to access your databases? Well, there. Prior to FileMaker Go, there was a product called FM Touch. It's still out there, um, but it's from a third party. And what that did was. It allowed you to create a FileMaker database. Well, you, you, you use FileMaker to create your database. Right. Then you export um, kind of what's called a database design report, which is kind of describes what your solution is. And then FM Touch would take that description and rebuild a database that looks a lot like the FileMaker one on your iPad, iPhone. And then it would allow you to synchronize and stuff. Um, and that that's an interesting solution, and but uh, I, I at this point now with FileMaker Go coming out, it, it, you know I'm not not destined to use that as much. It, it sounds like it. It I don't know. It's, it just it's a doesn't bit, seem like a good solution now that FileMaker Go is out there. Yeah, it's a little bit more cumbersome because there's there's more steps in between um, to actually get your solution onto. Whereas um, FileMaker Go will just 
read the database directly without having to go through um, these other steps. Right. In the database, the file format, is that something that only FileMaker could create a product that reads it? Is that like a closed source type thing where... Yeah. The, the actual database file format is not open source or anything. It's specific to FileMaker. Okay. That's what I was wondering. So that kind of limits the ability for third-party developers to create like a FileMaker Go competitor then. Yeah. this The FM Touch product was pretty amazing because... For what it could do, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, they, they had to basically rebuild almost everything that was in FileMaker, the calculation engine and things. And so it, it was somewhat limited in that, you know, it didn't do everything right, but it was, it was pretty cool. Um, and then there's another product called Bento, which is from FileMaker, and you could kind of think of it as a FileMaker Lite, or I, I like to think of it as kind of, the, kind of the iTunes of databases. Um, and so Bento is not cross-platform in that it runs on iOS and it also runs on Leopard on the Macintosh, but it doesn't run under Windows. Right. So it's specifically a Macintosh-based product or an iOS product, and it's it's a simplified database. So it really integrates well with the Apple address book, with iCal. Uh, those are like native objects to Bento. And... One question, why would – what are the advantages of using Bento for your contact management rather than just the address book itself? Well, you can add additional fields in Bento that relate directly to that contact. Um, so you could can store additional information about the contact that you couldn't in just the Apple address book. Okay. And then you can also relate those to other things that you're storing in, in Bento. Okay, by relate you mean you could have I mean there's groups in the address book. Uh, is right. there what? Well, you could have another independent object, you know, you could store say for example in Bento an invoice and that invoice could be related to a contact or books that you own, you lend it out to somebody, it's related to that person or something. Sure. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Is there anything else that Bento, I mean, what's the perfect user for Bento? I'd say, you know, Bento is a real inexpensive product. It's only $50 for the desktop version. It's very elegant in that, you know, it's all, it'd be really difficult to design a Bento database that doesn't look pretty. Um, and, and so if you are just, let's say you're kind of a do-it-yourself kind of person and, and you want to get started using a database, Bento would be a really great place to start. And you could, um, you could design something very easily and and get something looking nice. And you basically, if you got to the point where Bento do, can't do the functions you'd want to do, you could move your database to FileMaker. And basically. what are those, what are the limitations that, I'm not sure how much you've used it, that you would run into using Bento that FileMaker would be able to achieve? Well, there, there are a lot of... Um, Bento has no options for plugins, for example, um, whereas FileMaker has a lot of third-party plugins that allow you to connect and do more things. Like, you know, you can connect ben, uh, FileMaker to uh, QuickBooks. You can connect FileMaker to um, other solutions and things through those plugins. Um, Bento doesn't. It, it is definitely more limited compared to a subset of the kind of things that FileMaker does. Okay, cool. So, and then you also mentioned that Bento databases can be imported in the FileMaker. Is that how it yes. works? Yeah, in the latest version, FileMaker 11 directly imp allows you to import Bento, um, Bento things right into it. And I'm guessing you could not do the backwards way of doing FileMaker into Bento. Well, you could export into like a comma delimited format or something and, and then import that. But the conversion between Bento and FileMaker is is at a data level only. You know, like so if you've designed special Visually layout it'll be different. It, yeah, it, it it'll only be the information that you're exchanging between them rather not like the the screens that you actually designed and that kind of thing. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Well let's move on to the big I guess the big updates of the day. This is FileMaker Go 1.1 for iPhone and iPad. 
and it looks like a feature parody in both of these updates for the apps. Have you? Let me just quickly go through the list here for people that actually they just listened to the part where I talked about this. So, um, have you taken a look at what's been added to this 1.1 update yet? Yeah, it looks like there are four major features. Uh, do you want me to go through them? Uh, first off, just what's your favorite one of the four? What's going to impact you the most? Well, I th- I'm really excited about. Um, well, this is not really even listed as one of the fourth, but one of the four. But th- they have a new URL protocol, and this is, gets a little technical. But I mean, yeah, that's the that's the fourth one. The integration with third party apps. They're doing that through the URL stuff. Yeah, um, and and so you can essentially. I mean, there there are. Now it opens up the possibility for a lot of different applications to send information to FileMaker Go, and and, and that would be for things like you know reading bar, barcodes, um, or capturing your signature, or um, maybe sending location information to FileMaker Go. So it, it just opens up a lot of possibilities for integration that are really exciting. Yeah, it's kind of curious. I did the update this morning, and it was out, and I updated, and it didn't say anything about this enhanced URL or integration with third-party apps, and that's kind of the biggest one I think of the the ones they've added, and it's like, ooh, <laughs> it's kind of a hidden yeah. feature if you're not a developer or someone in the know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it really, well, it it's the, the feature probably that requires the most uh, knowledge from the end user in order to take advantage of it. Yeah, as the other things are, you know, like um, easily just click on a, a button and add that script step to your solution or something. Yeah, and the, the other ones were um, insert photos into container fields, save and send or send database, and then import from FileMaker databases online. So uh, the photo one's kind of cool because uh, I'm imagining that you have this you know, inventory database or for a garage sale or something or whatever it is, you know, you just take a photo of it on your iPhone and, or if they're on your iPad, you know, in the photo gallery, you could just pop those in. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a really cool. How uh, much, feature. how much, uh, does that impact your, your databases? Do you guys use a lot of photos in the work you guys do? Well, you know, um, there's a design decision that that you want to make with how many photos you're going to store in the database, um, especially when you're working over uh, a connection that's you know like if if there's a possibility of a, a phone connection, like a 3G connection versus a, a really high speed internet connection, uh, sending photos back and forth could could really at some point bog down your database. Yeah, I asked him about movies, and they said <laughs> uh, file size could get crazy that way. <laughs> yeah, so so you know that that's always a design decision that you need to f- figure out whether or not it makes sense in your in your situation. But certainly, um, it opens up possibilities for gathering photos in in an easier way um, and 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 sending them directly to fi- FileMaker. So, do most people then? I say most, but in your experience, do most people use FileMaker connected to a server as the way they interact with their databases? Um, that's that's certainly probably a preferable way to do it. Um, FileMaker server as a product uh, makes your database accessible easily by you know two hundred fifty to uh, I mean as many users as is practical with given the constraints of the way you've designed the database or the, the way that your internet connection is and stuff. So um, server manages all that. And you can also have, uh, you can also have FileMaker, FileMaker server be hosted by a hosting company so that you, you, know, like you wouldn't have to own a copy of server. You can just pay a monthly fee and have your, your FileMaker database be hosted out there on the internet so that then anyone who has an internet connection can, connect to it and that's different from just a website hosting provider correct right yeah okay so what else would you like to see added to the filemaker go in the future what what's still missing from this update Hmm. a lot of this is is really 
you know, limited by your imagination, you know, um, and we're, I, I feel like we're just at this beginning stage of, you know, imagining the possibilities of, of what it could do. Uh, I think it could be easier to, uh, even you know, if they were able to implement some of the, uh, you know, like barcode scanning and stuff directly in FileMaker. So you wouldn't even need a third party application in order to Right. That's one thing they showed me. They showed me the third party app for the enhanced URL stuff with barcode stuff. And it looked cool, but it's yeah. like, what if you could do that inside the app? I think they're yeah. taking the, the Evernote so, approach of <laughs> let's get some third parties to help us out. Yeah, you know, so so maybe at some point in the future it would be cool if you could actually run a, a sort of a plug in in inside inside of FileMaker Go, but you know that isn't an option right now. So that's is one that of, an iOS limitation of lack of plugin support. It it could be uh, it could be an iOS limitation. So I, I'd love to see plugins for Safari on the iPad. I'm not sure if that'll come with OS five or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's a difficult one. Um, but you know some of the other things that you cannot do in FileMaker Go right now. There's no printing. Um, Do you think 4.0 fixes that? I know a lot of apps. I've got 4.2 installed on my iPod Touch and iPad, and uh, printing sometimes is just thrown in, like drop text. I noticed printing's in there. It wasn't coded for it, but is that something you think they'd add into this update if it's not already in there? Um, I don't know. Uh, it, you know, it's it's one of those things now that it's it's like, uh, do you really need to print? You know, like if you're going to send something, if it's on your iPad, <laughs> it's it's uh, you know if if you want an electronic invoice now, it can send send uh, a PDF directly to the person, so so they can get it in their email. So that's one of the new features. Yeah, and then yeah, the saver some databases. Um, that's the PDF stuff. Uh, this import FileMaker database is that what's changed from that? I know the earlier version it it didn't work as well with online databases or how's that all work? Well, basically in, in the, the first version of FileMaker go, the imports command was not available. I don't think at all. Okay. And so, so now it's, it's one of the supported commands for, um, for working between FileMaker go. And, and so, you know, you can get around that by, by scripting in some, some instances where you actually, instead of using the import command, you actually um, go line by line through the external database and, and create records. So, I mean, there are ways around it. And, and in some cases, those workarounds might actually still have a lot of value because you have more control over how things work. Right. Is a uh, syncing something that FileMaker should look into adding? Is that kind of a th- big limitation right now? I think synchronization would be a huge win. Yeah, if if it that's it's just difficult to do synchronization in general. So any kind of help that they would be able to provide directly on the application side would be welcomed. Yeah, is that part and due because I think a lot of people work on the same database at the same time. How does that work? I mean, does that happen a lot? Well, that that's the the difficult thing about synchronizing in general um, is that you know how how do you make those decisions if two people change it exactly the same time uh, or within you know which one's more up to date uh, you know and so you'll see a lot of solutions that take a more simplified approach that you know you use your iPad for data gathering essentially mm-hmm. and and then you do a push of that information one way back into the database and once it pushed then you just use it live out of the database but it doesn't synchronize again and on like the mac or windows clients uh you are able to work with multiple people at the same time editing or does it lock like does it only allow one person to use it at one time it locks and unlocks as people use it or it, it locks and unlocks at a, a record level so you know like you if if you start editing one contact in your database no one else can edit that contact at the same time. They could view it, but they can't change it. So, so as soon as you go click into a field, essentially, and and start changing a person's name, you kind of own that record until you click out of it, and then somebody else could look at it. Okay, and that I 
Is that doable on the iPad in the future, you think? I think it might be. That's the way it works currently. I mean... Oh, on the iPad right now? Yeah, okay. yes. So basically, FileMaker Go does that record locking kind of thing if you're connected live to the database. Now, if you have a copy of that database locally on your iPad that you're or your iPod that you're taking with you, then there wouldn't be any need for record locking because there's only that one device that has connection to it. But if you're connected to a live database on the internet, then the record locking makes um So in a way syncing isn't even needed if you're one of those users that just is connecting to the database on a three G iPad and Right. Yeah. yeah. If you if you have a, a persistent internet connection, you know, everything's good. But as soon as you lose your internet connection, then you have to start thinking about, you know, do I have an offline copy and, and can I synchronize it? That kind of thing. Right. Okay. So I think we've covered it pretty uh, pretty full here. Um, does it, the PDF thing that's pretty is that pretty big for you guys? I mean, do FileMaker users want to send that information to other people on a regular basis? Yeah, I think that that, that opens up a lot of possibilities and makes things a lot easier. Yeah. So I mean, you think about it uh, like even when you're in the Apple Store and and they send you an electronic receipt right there for whatever you pur- purchase. So basically you'll you'll be able to do that kind of thing um, right on your iPhone or iPad. Okay, very cool. Well, uh, let's wrap this one up for the day. We'll be back, I think, next week to talk with Jonathan and go even more in depth and try to find out more about FileMaker. But where can people find you in the meantime? Well, my my company is Simbura.com, so you can go directly to that Simbura.com, C-I-M-B-U-R-A.com. Um, I have a blog, a tech blog there, and so I talk about some of these things as, as well. If you're interested to take a look, I've got an article about FileMaker versus Bento and, and some a review of FileMaker 11 and things out there that if you're interested. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks again for your time, and we'll talk to you again uh, next week. Yeah, thanks. Have a good day. Yep, you too. So that wraps up part two and this episode of FileMaker part one. We will have a part two episode next week or the week after where it's more of a roundtable type discussion uh, with some other things in there as well. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. I would greatly appreciate feedback if you have it. You can send that to 209-542-IPAD or you can email me at ipadpossibilities at gmail.com. So call in. Once again, it's 209-542-4723. So add that to your contact list. Call in as much as, much as you want. And I'd greatly appreciate any feedback. I'm always looking for more content to talk about, show ideas, uh, anything you can think of, send it in. I'd love to hear from you. That's 209-542-IPAD. And if you'd like to support this podcast, uh, please visit iPadPossibilities.com. You can uh, become a premium member today to gain access to special screencast videos. More of those will be coming out once I can get this uh, application fixed. It's uh, But uh, you'll get videos, you'll get that content early, all sorts of extra bonuses by becoming a premium member. You can also purchase the iPad Possibilities podcast app for $2.99 in the App Store. And uh, you can also, I'd greatly appreciate it if you just leave a review on iTunes. That's something I always uh, love to read and helps other people discover this show as well. So that's how you support this podcast. Leave feedback. And with that, you have been listening to the iPad Possibilities podcast on tppn.tv. I'll talk to everyone again next time.